Good evening, everybody, and welcome. I'm Karen Lawrence, president of The Huntington. Why It Matters is an ongoing series about the relevance of the arts and humanities today. The specific referent of the pronoun it in Why It Matters depends on the guest. The it tonight has a number of reference that matter in Hilton Alls's work and life. The visual arts, theater, literature, friendship, sexuality, love, and race. He's written powerfully about each of those. You've spoken about growing up as a kid in Brooklyn. Going to your first art exhibit at MoMA. Yes. And you described the experience this way. One docent explained the work to me. It was as if the top of my head blew off listening to her. And I think we have many docents in the audience. A big, would... big round of applause for the docents, please. Yeah. <laughs> But I think the docents in the audience would love to have had that kind of powerful effect <laughs> for a first-time museum goer. What sure. was so powerful, so memorable, so explosive okay. about that experience? I used to go to a, a wonderful bookstore called the Gotham Book Mart. And one day I just kind of walked up 6th Avenue and there was a sign and it said Rauschenberg. And I had never heard of this person before. And I walked um, into the museum and there was a goat in the middle of the floor. And the goat had paint splattered on it. And it was stuffed. And it had a tire around it. And it was on a, on a um, pedestal. And there was something so eerie about it. And I kept circling the goat and looking. And a woman was speaking to a group of people. And she had a break in the conversation. And I said, excuse me, if you do you have time to explain the goat. What is the goat? And um, she said, if you come back tomorrow at three, I'll explain the goat to you. <laughs> and <laughs> so I went home and told my mother that I was going back at three o'clock <laughs> to listen to this nice lady talk about a goat. I went back and the woman did something that was so extraordinary, and this is why I love docents always, <laughs> was that they give you language for the thing that you're intuiting. I knew something about Greek mythology and that the goat kind of represented queerness in some way that I didn't, I didn't have any language for. Primarily, she said, the thing that is so great is that you can do whatever you want as an artist. You can see it any way you want to see it. And, I mean, and that expression is true, that the top of my head blew off because I was already writing but I didn't have any language for that alchemy between who you were and then the thing that you made. And that's what she gave me. Let me shift to how we got to know sure. you in the Hilton Hall series for the Yale Center of British Art. Mm -hmm. Then it came to the Huntington, and, and two of the three exhibitions were in the North Passage, as Christina said, right outside of our Thornton Portrait Gallery mm -hmm. and our 18th century Grand Manor Portraits. Um, it was a wonderful juxtaposition. So I want to talk about the juxtaposition, but first to ask you kind of what your thought was in curating this exhibition. Each of these women were born in a colonialist frame. And how did they take that information, whether it's Nigeria from Andradeca or India from Celia, Lynette's parents are from Ghana, how do they take that information and how does it show up in their art? This idea of home has always haunted me and how do we belong or not belong? So what about that juxtaposition? Oh, I thought it was fantastic. One of the things that, you're, that I'm interested certainly is um, folks having the experience that I had with the docent, um, yeah. that she gave me enough information for me to know that my intuition was correct about an experience. I felt um, that the shows that were done here at the Huntington um, were a bridge um, from the history of the Huntington to contemporary painting, particularly by women. But I also wanted 
people to understand that within that context, how much the figure, whether black or white, male or female, or they, um, is the primary um, point for a lot of people who are visiting. And I wanted to talk about the ways in which the, portrait, the contemporary portrait is married to history and how history really has needed um, the context of contemporary portraiture too, and in order to be seen actually with more depth, I think. During your fellowship year, you spent a lot of time mm -hmm. among our three collections, yes. right? I yes. mean, it has is art, uh, certainly as the um, distinguished fellow of American art, but our botanical gardens, and here you were going to the Shoya House, our yes. Japanese heritage house, yes with Robert, and... Um, that was such a special day. I mean, I just want to know about a little bit of your experience during the fellowship. Well, that afternoon was an extraordinary um, occasion for me, and I, I remember going back to LA and telling friends about this, that I understood love in a way that I had not understood it before, and that meant Christina talking about place and grounds and the people who had built the Huntington, and Robert talking, going to Japan and bringing back something, a piece of a house or... Yeah. They were showing me something about the ways in which when you love something and you want to share the experience of your love for the thing, they're giving you love. A review that you wrote in The New Yorker mm -hmm. of a play on Broadway, Michael R. Jackson's uh, A Strange Loop. Oh, yes. You quoted Jackson on his experience of seeing a production of Arthur oh, Miller's yeah. Death of a Salesman. Very moving. So this is Hilton Hall's quoting, and it says this. I saw Death of a Salesman when I was 19 years old, he said. I don't know anything about being an old white man in the 40s. But the idea that you're worth more dead than alive, however they did it, that idea communicated from that stage to my black gay ass going to NYU. I wept. I felt sympathy and empathy for this man. And what I wanted to do in a strange loop was to flip it. Can I make some old white man feel empathy for this young black gay musical theater writer? Can I get them to understand that this is about the human condition? Yes. I think what Michael is saying there, and it's a very important point to make, is that humanism trumps everything. The hard part about being a humanist is holding on to it in this world. But you have to. Um, bitterness, Self-marginalization, these, these are the portions of a spiritually poor person. We're not spiritually poor people. We're not born that way. What we're born to do is to say, why would I accept those limitations? I'm myself, and myself is many, many different people all at once. So let's have that experience of being manifold as opposed to being one thing. Thank you for Thank sharing you. all of that. Yeah. Thank you.